Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first course of the Pitch and Pour seminar online. My name is Melanie DePhillips. I am the founder of WAM Public Relations, and I will be taking you through the courses over the next few weeks. Today, we are doing a general overview of public relations, and we are going to go over what public relations is. It would be no use to you to go through a full course if we really didn't take a deep dive into public relations and how it differentiates from other communication practices. This course was initially designed for business owners, emerging brands, aspiring publicists, and students of communication, but if you do not fall into one of those categories, does not mean you are not in the right place. I have put this seminar online because of the quarantine that is currently taking place, and I am happy to be assisting you all in reaching your consumers and keeping your brand alive during this time of uncertainty. So today we will begin the course and we will start with, this, with uncovering what public relations is. In this course, we will be going over who you are within the media and in your brand. We'll be talking about what the media is looking for and how your brand relates to that, when you should be contacting the media, where your target market is looking for you, and why your brand needs public relations. These things are so important, and these are the things that you need to know that will get you in the media overnight. In this course, I will not only help you uncover these five W's, but I will also help you get PR overnight by uncovering these five W's. A little bit about me before we get started is that I studied at Purdue University in the Brian Lamb School of Communication. My specific area of study was public relations and rhetorical advocacy. I started my brand about five years ago, but I've been practicing public relations for more than 10 years as a consultant and as a freelance publicist. My areas of expertise come in fashion, beauty, technology, hospitality, and tourism. I work with clients who are emerging brands, establishing brands, and even consult with Fortune 500 companies. This is why I wanna share my tools with you today. After today, my hope for you is that not only will you get media placement, but you will be able to generate a revenue during a time of uncertainty in this quarantine. So what is PR? This is gonna be the first slide where we take a deep dive into our content that we will be covering today. How I like to describe PR is by also uncovering the other pieces of communications in what I call the communication circle. So in this circle, we divide it up into three parts. Because I only have two hands, you'll have to humor me a little bit with this circle. But the first piece of this circle is going to be the communication the public relations piece. Public relations is your story. It's the messaging behind your brand. If your brand does not have a story, you have nothing. Why? Well, when you talk to your consumers and they ask, what do you do? The first thing you do is you tell them who you are and what your company story is. That is public relations in a nutshell. Without PR, you have nothing because PR is what builds the ground for your marketing content. Well, here's a great thing. This is gonna be the differentiator between PR and marketing. A lot of you probably logged onto this not knowing what that is. Here it is. Public relations is what generates your marketing content. And by marketing content, I mean your physical content in photos, I mean your email marketing content, how you're doing your SEOs and uh, overviewing the analytics. And all of that, it comes from what your story is. Without your story, you cannot do those other items. So our first piece of the puzzle is public relations. It's gonna be all the verbiage, the words, the story, and everything you speak about when you talk about your brand. That's the first part of this circle. The second part of this circle, we're gonna get, make it a little bit bigger because marketing is quite big, is going to be all of that content, digital content, um, guerrilla marketing, all of the marketing ideas you can think of, they fall within that puzzle piece, social media as well. And then the last piece of that puzzle is going to be advertising. Advertising is a distribution channel that you use for your marketing content as a paid resource. The reason we are talking PR is because we want to put money back into your budget. PR is how we get your brand in the media without making those payments. 
when you use advertising as a paid distribution channel, you're unable to track your return on your investment. So with PR, you are able to track that because there comes with analytics of exactly where your story is going to be placed. Advertising, not so much. So you could say that PR and advertising slightly rival each other. I say kind of. I think with those three pieces, that's how you'd create a very strong communications team. I think that each three parts of this circle are what make your, your business successful. Uh, I also want to mention that social media advertising is different to where you can track it and you can see those analytics. That is extremely important and that is the type of advertising that I push my clients to do when done effectively and when you're using someone that knows how to do it correctly. We are not going to get into most a lot of marketing and advertising in this course because PR deserves a course of its own and there's plenty of those courses out there. So let's keep going. Go over some of the common misconceptions in public relations because these are some of the things that you might have even found yourself thinking and or saying when, re when relaying a public relations message. The first one is that public relations is only beneficial to large businesses. Not the case. In fact, large businesses should have an established message. It should be a lot more maintenance of that message when you're doing PR for a larger company. Why this is a misconception is because large companies are usually the ones that can afford a very large retainer fee, which is normally associated with public relations. I'm talking like tens of thousands of dollars. That's why most people think I can't afford public relations or I don't need public relations. It's only meant for those big companies. As I said, that's not the case. PR is actually just as, if not more important for small businesses than it is for large businesses. When you're an emerging brand, you need that storytelling, that brand building, and that message maintenance even more than you need it down the road because when you're making that first impression, you're making a lasting impression. Uh, we talked about this on the previous slide when we talked about the communication circle, but public relations is not marketing. And a lot of times you'll see that businesses think that one, one can do uh, the other. Sometimes that, ha <laughs> we have a baby here. Sometimes that can be the case, but it just depends on the responsibilities. More often than not, you should probably keep the two separate. I don't like to say that they are interchangeable. I don't believe that they are. I think that they are two separate careers for a reason. Um, and in fact, in the last slide, we talked about how they are different. So no, public relations is not just marketing. They are completely separate. If you don't remember how they are separate, revert or go ahead and rewind this back to the previous slide. Refer back to that one. Um, on, uh, similar to that, a lot of people believe that public relations people can do your marketing and vice versa. Again, I've already been over this. It's not the case. Um, you can find people that are jacks of all trades, but what I think is that when you're hiring for that communication circle, you should have three different part parties handling those, um, those different tasks. Now, this one I hear a lot from small businesses who work with large public relations firms, spend a lot of money and don't get that instant ROI, that instant return on investment. And that is that public relations is a waste of time and money, not the case. Uh, public relations is a marathon, not a sprint. A lot of times you're gonna see that return on your investment farther down the road. I have worked with companies that say that their payoff happened a year later. Um, and it's true, they actually wanted me to pitch a story that ended up getting picked up a year and a half later. And it had, it, the reason why is because it fit the assignment at the time. That, I'm getting a little bit off track, but what I will say is that it's not a waste of time and money. Any effort put into speaking to the media on your behalf, which is a big part of PR, is not a waste of time or money. It might be a large investment upfront, but the payoff in the end is the longevity of your company's survival in the, uh, in the, uh... but the payoff of PR is the longevity of your brand in whatever market you are in. 
the last one I wanted to, oh, there's two more. So uh, PR being a catch-all, we talked about this. I, it, a PR person is not your salesperson. They're not your agent. They're not your manager. PR is a career in its own. It's a profession in its own. We're going to get into all of what that entails. Uh, it really requires a team to be quite honest. It's hard to do PR as one person. You can totally do it. You can do it successfully, but um, there's a lot of different things that go into PR. It's similar to marketing in that there are a lot of different styles of PR, which we will also get into, but we're going to focus on traditional today. And then the last one, which is similar to the previous one, a publicist is your sales rep. No, we are not. We are not out there knocking door to door. We are not pitching your products for you. And the last thing you should do is ever assume that someone that does PR for you is going to get out there and sell your product. It's not the case. We are selling your story. We are not selling your product. And if you hire a publicist with the expectation of giving them a sales number or a sales quota, you are going to fall back into that idea of public relations being a waste of time and money because that's not what the job entails. So when you understand that, you have a better grasp on PR, things will go a little bit smoother for you uh, when you're working with that PR professional. So after we debunk these misconceptions, I ask you to stick with me in this um, and clear your slate. Any prior uh, conception, misconceptions or ideas you had about public relations, even if you think you have it completely figured it out, let's start fresh. We're gonna unlearn to relearn. We've debunked what people think. Let's move forward. I think this is a great time for you guys to take a sip of that drink because this is pitch and pour. Um, it's after five, so you've earned it. <laughs> We've already made it through a good bit of information. So take a sip and let's jump into the work. So I want to talk about what companies are doing right now thinking that public relations is and talk about how this could potentially be not working in their favor. Um, pay for play. A pay for play is advertising. It's not public relations. When you are paying for placement in some type of media outlet, it's called an advertorial or an ad placement. Uh, the jargon is very similar, but they are different. When you, put, when you pay to have a photo placed, that would be an advertorial. When you're paying to be in an article, you're paying for placement um, or paying for an uh, editorial feature, that would also be an advertorial. Um, another thing people are doing in PR is they're looking at their competitors and thinking they need to do exactly what their competitor is doing. Not the case. We're gonna get into all of this in more detail in the next few slides. Um, pitching to the media non-effective pitching to the media. This happens a lot in emails. We're gonna really take a deep dive into this in the next few slides as well as the upcoming courses. Um, and with that pitching comes the quality or the quantity over quality. Again, we'll get into that and communicating the it factor. So whatever your mission statement is, um, that needs to be your differentiator and what you're communicating to the media so that you get that placement because you're separating yourself from anyone else in your network. So pay for play. Paying for placement, again, is not public relations. Uh, this gets misconstrued with gifting because Gifting is a big part of public relations. Gifting is when you're sending the product or uh, material or whatever you are offering a service to the media to introduce your brand. Um, this is different than pay for play because you're not paying the person or paying the media outlet to feature you and or your company or your brand product or service. Uh, gifting is a way to introduce yourself so that you, the person when they receive an assignment can revert back to you and say, I've experienced this company uh, firsthand and organically I enjoy it so it fits into this assignment. Uh, as I mentioned, pay for play is advertising, advertorials, uh, ad placements. They're very similar jargons, but it is different. PR, we wanna save that money, put it back into your budget and not pay. And we'll get into how in this course. Um, one thing I do wanna note is that Towards the end of Q1, Q2, Q3, and especially Q4, 
you are going to get emails from magazines like Cosmopolitan, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, um, wherever, whatever, or travel and leisure, whatever you think uh, your mecca of magazines or media outlets would be, you're going to receive an email from them saying, would you, oh, in order to be featured in our magazine, you can purchase a spa and they make it seem like it's going to be this big PR to do when it actually is in fact an advertorial with no ORI, no way of tracking the analytics. You would be much better served if you put that money towards social media marketing, if you know how, or hiring someone to do that for you. But what I want to tell you is that the advertorial team is not connected to the journalists or the editors, and they're not going to give you that contact information. There are other ways to get that contact information that I will share with you in the course, but working with advertorial teams is not how you do it. So do not think that because you spend money in advertising with a media outlet, you are guaranteed a spot in that media outlet. It is not the case. Um, and more often than not, you're not gonna see a return and you're not gonna get PR, natural organic PR from that outlet. So go ahead and just delete that unless you've got money to spend and you're willing to take a big risk. Um, copying your competitor will not get you press. Using them as inspiration will. What does this mean? It means, that if your competitor is getting press, figure out what they're doing correctly. So if they are getting picked up by different media outlets, don't. it's not just because they have a publicist. It's not just because they have a PR team. It's because they're doing something right. Whether they've got the right brand messaging, they're pitching effectively, they are presenting something that looks different than anyone else in your guys' market. Use it as inspiration. Figure out what they're doing correctly and then let that inspire you to do your job correctly in a different way that separates you from them. So as all uh, content and creatives, everything is birthed out of inspiration. Use your competitors as inspiration, but make sure that you stay authentic to what your brand is um, when you start beginning to work with the media and pitch yourself in the media. Um, Non-affecting pitching, so whether you are speaking to a journalist or you're pitching via email, um, the three big mistakes that people make is that they send an email with not enough information, meaning you're not giving them a company overview or you're not telling them enough about what you're pitching. Um, the next is that you're providing far too much information and by that it's a visual breakdown. So if you're sending them an email that has multiple paragraphs, go ahead and stop because if they open it and see it, they're going to delete it. Um, enough information or the limit in an email pitch would be one paragraph and a few bullet points and that's it. So um, not enough information back to that enough what you need to do to provide enough information is hit the who what when where why and the differentiator um, that's all you need to put in an email mission statement company overview who what when where why and your bullet points and then the last is huge photo files if you are going to include photos into your pitch make sure that you are using an outsource link like Dropbox or Google Files, or Google Drive. Um, never put a high resolution image in your email and do not put low resolution images in the body of your email. High resolution images are gonna clog up an inbox and it's going to make your journalists and media personnel upset. They don't wanna have a clogged inbox. It's a great way to get blacklisted from ever getting your email open. Just don't do it. Low resolution photos are useless because even though it provides a visual aid, then they have to go back and ask you for the high resolution photo. So it's, it's, it's pointless when you could just provide a Dropbox link or a Google Drive link with the high resolution photo. They can click the link, see photos, see what they wanna use, ask your permission, they've got it, it's done, and the pitch is easy peasy. Um, you wanna make things as simple as possible by that, that means provide the who, what, when, where, why, and differentiator. 
mission statement, uh, a link for photos if necessary, and make it one paragraph bullet points, that's it. So avoid the long narrative, they don't have time for it. And honestly, you don't have time to be writing that much either. When it comes to your pitches, I also want you to consider that quality over quantity matters. So I know in the beginning of a lot of PR personnel careers, it's common to want to send your pitch to as many journalists as possible with the hope that your pitch is gonna get picked up. Not the case. What you need to do is research the stories where your market is covering and then pitch to those journalists. So you don't, if you are a restaurant, it might work to pitch to travel and leisure but you're probably not gonna pitch to Vogue magazine. Um, there might be Vogue Eats, but Vogue Eats is probably for a completely different market than your restaurant is. Let's say your restaurant is a cheap beer and pizza place. Vogue is not gonna, Vogue Eatery is not gonna pick up a, a pizza and pint place unless it's an editorial feature with uh, glitz and glamour new age you get the picture. So don't waste your time pitching to a bunch of journalists and outlets that don't fit your market. All that's gonna do is waste your precious time that you could be using on researching media outlets that actually work for you. So my suggestion here and your takeaway from this slide is that you should be typing into Google whatever your market is hit the news tab and see what media outlets are covering your market. So if I'm fashion, what I would do is go to Google, type in fashion, hit the news uh, tab option, and then see what media outlets are covering. Don't bother with the headlines yet. Just look at the uh, media outlets, whether it's CNN, Yahoo Fashion, uh, Vogue, Harper's, you, you name it. So you're gonna see ones that you might not have noticed, so some that you see all the time. Um, and that's a good way for you to start realizing who is covering your network. So we've talked about what your pitch needs to include. We've talked about how you're going to find those outlets to pitch to. Now what I wanna talk about is how, or what is most important in your pitch and that's communicating that it factor. We talked about the who, what, when, where, why. And then I said the differentiator. The differentiator is your it factor. And before you ever reach out to the media, you must know what your it factor is. It's what separates you from your competitor. If you don't know what that is, take time looking into your competitors and see what's different about you. Then build your brand story around that. That's what the PR side of your brand is, is building your story around what makes you different. Um, once you have that it factor, you need to make sure that it's built into your mission statement because in your pitch, you're also going to open your pitch with your mission statement and your elevator pitch combined. So we're gonna get into that later on in courses, but that's the first thing that uh, journalists should see when they open your pitch. Um, and also when you're in general conversation, you should be talking about what your it factor is because that's what's gonna uh, conjure up more business for you. And that's why people are gonna be interested in your company. But we've talked about the five mistakes that companies are making. Now we really need to get into the roots of PR. There's no such thing as an overnight success story, but there is such thing as overnight media coverage. This is your first major takeaway from this course. I want to share with you something that can help you get PR overnight right now. It's called helpareporterout.com. You can log on to helpareporterout.com right now and you will find that you can get on an email list where journalists will, will be asking for sources for assignments three times a day through this email outlet and you can actually submit your story to these journalists every single day and get into the media overnight. Let me explain a little bit. So Help a Reporter Out is powered by Cision, which is the ultimate PR software. It's the ultimate public relations network, if you will. It's super expensive to join Cision, so I don't recommend doing that now, and I can teach you ways around joining it. But what I can't stop you from is using their number one resource that's gonna help you get into the media overnight, which is helpareporterout.com. Go on there, it's, there, is, there are paid 
ways to use it, but the free one's fine to help you get PR overnight. Join it. You're going to receive an email three times a day loaded with prompts from journalists who are looking for people like you to be sources and plugs in their story. And right now, we're in the middle of a coronavirus pandemic, but people are still looking for sources in every topic, lifestyle and fitness, fashion and beauty, travel, uh, technology and healthcare. So we're, they're looking for sources for all sorts of stories. So join now because there is, this is the number one takeaway um, at, up to now in this course that you could be in the media tomorrow if you join now. So stop this right now, press pause, go join, help a reporter out, and then resume when you get back into this. Now, now that you've joined helpareporterout.com, I want to go over the five things you need to know right now about PR, other than no PR is bad PR, because duh, everyone knows that. That saying is as old as dirt. Um, but number one, you are always networking, whether you realize it or not. When you're talking to friends, family, or social media, FaceTiming, talking to business acquaintances, you are always networking. It's good to know. There is a time and place to get technical, and it's not in your email pitch. I will get into more detail on that in the next coming slides. Number three, anyone can do public relations. It's true, but you must be trained, and we will also get into that. There are three things you can start to do every day to increase your brand buzz. And it has to do with reading the news. So if you're not big into reading the news, you're going to start getting big into reading the news. And lastly, dream big, but start small. Tomorrow might not be your day on the Today Show, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen in the next year. So hang on and I'll tell you about what I mean by dream big, but start small. When I say you are always networking, whether you realize it or not, I'm inspired by this group I read about in Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point. It's a group of people called Mavens Connectors and Salespeople. In PR, connectors are your publicists. So in the book, he talks about how connectors are people that connect you with people, places, and things that you are interested in. This could be someone that you call for vacation recommendations or restaurant recommendations or night out on the town recommendations. Connectors are people that know a little bit about everything but, and, and enough to be dangerous about everything. So you trust their opinion and you call them. Those are people that you wanna network in with. Every group of friends, acquaintances, and families has connectors. Think of the people that you call and ask for suggestions. And if you're thinking, I am that person, it's quite possible that you are the connector. But if you're the connector, then start connecting your brand with people that matter. So take a minute to think, who are the connectors that surround me? And then strategize how you can use them for your brand when it comes to public relations and relating to your consumers. When I say there is a time to get technical and you need to know when that is, I've already told you that writing emails with paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs for a pitch is wrong. That's what I'm talking about. We're not getting technical in our first pitch. If somebody in the media wants to know about your business, they're going to ask you what they want to know. Don't just assume they want to know um, how your company got started and um, how you were inspired and where you went to school and where you grew up and who your first boyfriend was and so on and so forth. If they want to know, they'll ask you, wait for them to prompt you. You would be surprised how the media will work you into a story that you never would have considered for yourself. So times we want to get technical when you're writing your mission statement, write five, write 100, write a million mission statements until you find the one that works perfectly for you, but get technical. When you're developing an in-person presentation, so when you're meeting with the media or brands that you want to partner with or influencers, those are called desk sides. And we're going to get into that in a future course. But desk sides are extremely important to get technical in because that's when you're selling your entire brand. You are actually face to face with the media. You've scheduled a time to meet with them. They're giving you their time. They're honoring yours. It's a great time to get technical. And as I said, in a future course, we will go into why, but it's good to know that when you're meeting with someone one-on-one -on -one, or when you're setting up a desk side, that's a great time to get technical. And then obviously when you're doing an interview and they're allowing you the time slot to get technical, get technical. 
a lot of times an interview will be 30 minutes, 60 minutes, sometimes only five. What you need to do is pick the technical uh, ideas that you want to instill in that interview, stick with them, and do the best you can with the time you're given, even if it is five minutes. If it's 60, go nuts, tell your whole story, but make sure that you are trained on what you're saying, and we will also get into that in a later course. Uh, I mentioned that anyone can do public relations. It's completely true. You need to make sure that the person that's doing it is trained, whether it's an intern, someone on your current communication team. But what you should do is consolidate your public relations responsibilities or your publicist, your current publicist responsibilities, and make sure that they're actually doing PR and they're not doing your sales. They're not doing your, uh, your catch-all marketing. They're not reaching out to advertisers for you. Make sure that you know what you have your publicist doing so that you're not questioning what the ROI is that you're getting from them. Now, the three things that you should be doing every single day. When you wake up in the morning, start reading the news. And I'm not talking about the general news, I'm talking about the news that has to do with your market. If you know what's going on in your market, then you can pitch yourself into your market and know what stories they're covering. If you know it's Coachella and people are going to be wearing a certain type of jewelry and you want to break, break into that market as a jewelry designer, that coverage is going to start a few months before Coachella. You want to be up on front, in front of that coverage and potentially pitch yourself into someone who might be running a bunch of jewelry pieces or someone who says looking for pieces to cover with another uh, jewelry brand or so on and so forth, influencers, you name it. Start reading the news. That's going to be your lead into how you get into the media. Next, you're going to study the press your competitors are getting and insert yourself into the story. So similar to reading the news, start reading about your competitors and then read their coverage as if it's about you. It can't, does your name fit into that story? Are you actually reading about your competitors? Should you be looking into other competitors? Does your brand flow with the story that they are getting coverage in? Chances are they were just someone that got plugged into a story that was already written. That's an opportunity for you to take note of that journalist and introduce yourself, which we'll also get into in a later course. Um, start interacting with the media now and what that means is start paying attention to the media outlets that you are seeing when you search your name on Google and you hit news and by name either your business name or the market that you're in and you hit news start seeing what media outlets are popping up and covering whether that's the Yahoo Finance uh, New York Times the cut you name it or pop sugar um, when you see these media outlets popping up, take note of who is popping up. And then from there, start paying attention to the journalists that are covering those stories. You'll want to take note of those, build an Excel spreadsheet of the journalists that are covering it, and you'll realize the world gets really small really quickly of who you should be interacting with. From there, I'm gonna give you another takeaway, big takeaway. You should start following those journalists on social media from your business account. That's big takeaway number two. So big takeaway number one was helpareporterout.com, which is also a great way to start working with journalists and getting to know them. Takeaway number two is going to be following those journalists on social media and interacting with them. Be mindful of their personal space. If you don't, want to comment on a picture of them with their son, don't comment. Don't feel like you have to interact with them on every single picture. But when something's relevant to you and you feel called to interact, do it. Social media is a great way to build relationships and bridge connections with people. And who better than journalists who can, that can make your business last through, I don't know, a pandemic called COVID-19 or COVID-19. So start interacting with the media now. Figure out the people that you should be interacting with, follow them on social media, takeaway number two, and make it happen for yourself. Dream big, but start small. This is the most important slide in this course today. Why? Because I have worked with so many clients who don't understand the importance of small podcasts, local news segments, local newspapers, local magazines, blogs, and YouTube channels. Why are these so important? Because major media outlets pull from smaller media outlets. So it's so funny to me how I have spoken with people who are like, 
this balloon animal artist was on the Today Show, or this opening act ended up on Good Morning America, or this mother-daughter duo who cooks in the kitchen on Saturdays ended up getting a 30-second spiff on Ellen. Well, those were all people that were covered in smaller segments. And by that, I mean they were covered in a podcast or a local news segment, and somebody from those larger segments was assigned to find a um, niche that those people were in and they went to smaller segments to find them so you want to get as many podcast interviews local news segments papers magazines blogs and youtube channel coverage that you can it's super important okay so i apologize i had to move locations to plug my computer into an outlet so um not that anyone was staring at my box anyways but um you're probably thinking, okay, so where do I begin? And uh, we already went over that. The first thing you need to do, if you haven't done so already, is go sign up for helpareporterout.com. So let me see if I can make this a little bit brighter. There we go. Um, sign up for helpareporterout.com and get those prompts three times a day. Start submitting yourself for the prompts that they are asking you for. Um, this is a great way to get in the press overnight. Uh, number two, make sure in your pitches that when you're pitching to the media on these help a reporter out prompts that you are only including your mission statement, who, what, when, where, why, your differentiator if applicable, and then a photo link also if applicable. They will ask you for it. The cool thing about help a reporter out is they will actually tell you exactly what they need from you. So you don't necessarily have to do a lot of pitching. Um, they're already giving you what they need. So you kind of just need to fill their order. Um, so that's number one, help a reporter out. Number two, start pitching yourself to them. Number three, uh, start reading the news every day, start paying attention, build an Excel spreadsheet with the different media outlets that you are seeing covering your prompts, and uh, take note of the journalists as well. Start following them from your business account and interacting with them on social media. And then also sign up for my next course, which will go live next Monday. And I'm going to go over what the course moving forward is going to cover. So next week is going to be communicating with the media. And that's going to be a little bit of what we just touched on, but in thorough detail. So help a reporter out plus more information. Um, how you speak to the media in person, in interviews, uh, how you write about yourself, your entire brand voice. The following week, we're going to talk about writing the perfect pitch. So actually, now, instead of using Help a Reporter Out, you're going to be reaching out to the media and giving them the material that you want them to cover. Uh, your life in the headlines, talking about what happens once you start getting press. We'll talk about desk sides and media meetups and gifting the media, We're, which means setting meetings to have face-to-face -face -face meetings with them. We'll talk about social media musts and how you use social media in the PR world rather than just social media advertising, which is completely different. Um, your business archetype, so who you are in the media. So you might know who you are as far as your network goes, but as far as the part that you're playing in media stories, it's completely different. Um, this will be super fun. We'll play a game called Stunt Scandal or Situation. And I actually have a podcast, BizCom with Wom, where my husband, AJ, and I down, we talk about, we give you the lowdown on the headlines that are current in the news, and we break down whether they are a stunt scandal or just a regular situation. So if you haven't heard of that, go listen to those podcasts, super fun. We're gonna play that in one of our courses. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about press releases. So once you've taken the entire course or you've taken all the courses, you'll be able to write a press release thoroughly and correctly to the media so that you are getting the coverage that you deserve. Thank you for joining me for the first course. Please share with friends and family that you think would benefit from this. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week.